Okay, so get first search is going to be the first transversal algorithm that we looked at. And the whole idea behind it is basically in its name, we start in one node, we keep on activating, we go down depth first. So we just keep on going one node at a time, all the way down until we reach a blockade, and then we're going to backtrack. And this makes it a recursive algorithm as well because it's backtracking. So once we hit a stopping point, we backtrack and we go to the previous node, and then we look to see if there's an alternative route. And we follow the alternative route down again, one by one, all the way down until there's blockade. And then again, we backtrack at that point and do the same process over and over. So let's first write that process down. So we activate or select a node and activate it as our beginning node. Now in this module, in this course, you will obviously be told which node to activate, but it also depends on where you're going to be using this. So you select a, vert select a vertex and that becomes your root node and you activate it. But again, in this module and this course, you'll be given to you and then in real life, you'll have specific outcomes that you want to achieve for doing that. Then what you're going to do is you're going to look at the vertices adjacent to this activated node. This activated node or vertex. And you're going to select one and activate it. Now, when you select one and you activate it, usually you go by alphabet or by numerical. Then you look at all the adjacent vertices um, connected to that activated node and you select one and activate it. So just one thing to note, you look at all the adjacent vertex vertices which are inactive when you do this approach and you're just going to repeat this essentially until you reach a point where you can't go any further. When you reach a point where you can't go any further, you're going to backtrack. So continue until no more vertices can be activated. Then you backtrack to previous vertex. and perform search again. Okay, and then you're going to continue this until every vertex in your graph is reached. And once you do that, you have a spanning tree. Vertex is reached. Okay, so let's actually just jump straight to examples because the examples really clear it up for you and you've seen how it works. Okay, so here we have an example, and this graph is actually a spanning tree. You can go ahead and check it. The idea is it doesn't have any cycles and stuff, so it really is a tree, so it is a spanning tree of itself. Um, but again, this is just to show you the process on how exactly to go about the algorithm, and then we'll do another example where there is a cycle involved so that we can see very clearly that by performing this algorithm, we get a spanning tree out. There will be many different kinds of spanning trees depending on which route you start at and etc. But the idea is you can get a spanning tree using this algorithm. So let's start with vertex A. So we're going to activate vertex A. So let's just write that down. So what we're going to do is when we write down our depth first search trees, we're going to order our vertices by when they are activated. So that gives a very clear description on exactly how we are transversing through the graph to find the spanning tree. So we have A is activated. Now we look at all the adjacent vertices to A, which are not active. And then we select one of them to be active. So in this case, it's easy for us because we only have one adjacent vertex. It happens to be B. So we activate B. Okay, so we've gone from A to B. Next up, we look at B and we look at all the adjacent vertices to B, which in this case are C and L. And we choose one of them to activate. So we use, do it alphabetically, so we choose C. So we activate C. 
Okay, now we at C, we look at all the adjacent vertices to C, which are inactive, which is D, and we activate one of them. So here it's, it's relatively straightforward. Okay, so we activate D. Okay, next up, we look at D, all the inactive vertices adjacent to D, and we activate one of them. Here we only have, let's just first finish that, we have D and we only have E as an adjacent vertice, which is inactive, so we're going to activate E. Okay, and the same thing with H. And now we finally get to some way different. Okay, now at H, we look at all the adjacent vertices to H, so it's J and G. Now we look at which one do we activate. So again, we're doing this alphabetically. So we're going to activate G first. So we get to G. Then we look at the adjacent vertices to G, which are I and F. And we activate again by alphabet. So we activate F first. And now you can see when you look at F, there are no adjacent vertices to F, which are inactive. So we have to backtrack. So now we backtrack. So we go from F and we backtrack to G. So now we add G again and we look at all the adjacent vertices connected to G. So here we have I basically in that situation. So we select I to be active. So we select I to be active. Okay. Then we're like, we add another blockade because we can't go any further because there are no adjacent vertices to I, which are not active. So we backtrack again. So we backtrack back to G. There are no adjacent vertices uh, by G, which are not already active. So we backtrack again further. So we backtrack to H. Now we look at H. What are the adjacent vertices to H? That's J. So we activate J. Here we have J, and then we activate J. I realize I used the color I really shouldn't have used there. Okay, so then we look at J, and we activate K. I just want to change the colors up here. So that you can see it's a different situation that we're doing here. Okay, so we have J, and then we have K. Now we're like, okay... We have no more adjacent vertices to K, which are inactive, so we have to backtrack again. So we backtrack to J. Again, there's no adjacent vertices that are inactive. Backtrack to H, backtrack to E, backtrack to D, backtrack to C, backtrack to B, and then we can activate the L. And then we are done. Now, again, you are looking for a spanning tree, and when you write this down, or when you write down how exactly you would have found your spanning tree, in regards to the depth first search, you will list the order that you transversed the vertices. So you would say A, B, C, D, E, H, G, F, I, J, K, and L. Now we're going to go on to the next example, which is going to show you a little clearer the situation that you will get a tree out of it, a standing tree. So this example is going to give you a clear, clear depiction that is going to give you a spanning tree when you perform the depth first search because the previous one was already a tree so you didn't really necessarily see what was the point. Again I promise you that these algorithms are used elsewhere as well so it's a case of it's not just for spanning trees it's for other things. One of So in this example let's use E as the starting vertex. So you want to start at E so you're going to activate E. So you've activated E, so now we're going to need to choose, essentially, a vertex, or look at the adjacent vertices. So let's actually just write everything down. You don't have to write everything down. This is just to, again, get through the process. So E is active. The adjacent vertices, vertices to E are B, F, and H. Okay, so we have B, F, and H. Now, usually we go through alphabet, so we choose B as the next active vertex. So we've activated the vertex B. 
Okay, so now we're going to go again. What are the adjacent vertices to be? They are A and C. So you have A and C are your adjacent vertices. And just to be even clearer about this, now with A and C, which one are we going to select? We're going to select A. So A comes next, so let's activate A. Again, you don't have to do that table situation. I'm, you could just do it on your graph and write down the order that you're hitting it. It doesn't make a difference. It's up to you. So A, we look at the adjacent vertices to A. There's just one. There's D. So that's the next one to be activated. And then we do the um, adjacent vertices to D, which are inactive, and that's G. So you'll notice occasionally I'll point out that we look for the inactive adjacent vertices. Because the whole idea of the depth first search is that you don't you try not to visit the same vertices again. So in this regard, you're only going to activate in, from the inactive vertices because you've already then covered the ones that you know are activated. So again, inactive vertice of D that's adjacent to D is G. So we activate that. And we continue on. Here it's going to be a case of H. And we activate that. And now this is going to be a little bit clearer in regards to how do we go about it. So remember the whole idea is we're creating a spanning tree and that is also why we don't join or link up the activated vertices. Because if we had to activate E now, well, if we had to connect it to E, you would end up having a cycle. And remember trees don't have cycles. So again, just a reminder of the process, you only look at the adjacent vertices which are inactive. So in regards to H, the only inactive one is I. And you know that if you had to connect H to E, you create a cycle, which is obviously not a spanning tree because it's not a tree. So just a reminder. So we have I, so we activate I. Okay. And now we go to F, because it's the only inactive adjacent vertice to I. So we activate F. And again, we have the situation that F is adjacent to E and C, but E is already active, so we only have C left. So we activate C. I'm just filling that in there. Okay, so now you should be able to see in your graph that everything in red is a spanning tree. So that is the graph, of the spanning tree, the subgraph of the larger graph, the, the full graph, essentially, not the larger graph. So again, depth first search, you go as far down as possible. And in this case, we didn't even have to backtrack. We ended up covering the entire graph in this example. But you go as far as possible, and if not, you backtrack. And when you're writing it, it's the order of your transversal. So in this case, it'll be E, B, A, D, G, H, I, F, and C. The order of your transversal. 